So good morning and welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am joined by Tim Jones, who is the Grow Good Guy. And I'll let you explain a little bit more about what that is, but welcome, Tim. Hello. Thank you for having me. Oh, absolute pleasure. Hey, look, Tim and I got introduced via a friend, as is always the case in Little Old New Zealand, and uh, really enjoyed hearing his story. So I invited him onto the podcast to talk a little bit about, about that. But before we do that, Tim, would you just mind sharing with us a professional and a personal best in your life so far? Wow. Uh, professional best would probably be uh, becoming having my company become a B Corp um, pretty early on in the piece, which I guess we'll talk about a bit more later on. Yeah. Uh, personal best. I think it's probably being um, a hopefully slightly the, slightly better than average dad to my nine year old daughter. I think that's what I'm I'm aiming to try and be the best. But hey, we all have our moments and yeah, there isn't a rule book. We are human indeed, and there is absolutely no rule book. I'm sure you're doing a fine job. <laughs> Excellent. So, yeah, so at B Corp, this is why we actually kind of got talking because we got introduced mm-hmm. and you were expl- I didn't really understand. I'd heard of it, but didn't understand what it really meant. So I wonder if that might be a good place to start. What is a B Corp? That is a great question. Um, so a certified B Corporation is generally, I say generally, a for-profit business because uh, there are some exceptions, but in general, it's for-profit businesses that have been independently verified to be operating at the highest levels of transparency and accountability of their social environmental footprint. So it's kind of CSR on steroids or corporate social responsibility on steroids. Um, To get certified, you you undertake an initial self-assessment, which is then verified by an external independent auditor from B Lab, which is a a non-profit uh, organization with um, regional hubs around the world. So our regional one is, is in Melbourne, B-Lab Australia, New Zealand. So they verify your score, independently verify your score. You need to meet a score of 80 out of 200 to get the certification. Um, yeah, and it's, I guess it's um, corporate social responsibility to a deeper level where you actually have to prove the good that you're doing rather than, hey, look at us, we've offset our carbon, um, aren't we doing great? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. And you say it's like corporate social responsibility on steroids, but it's not just for large corporates, right? hundred percent. No. Um, so my business is a B Corp and my business is currently me and a couple of contractors that I engage, uh, you know, from now and then, um, all the way through to, uh, within New Zealand, we have Katmandu is a B Corp. They're a listed yep. company. Um, and globally you have companies uh, of the size of like Ben and Jerry's or Danone, one of the world's biggest companies. Um, but globally, the vast majority of B Corps, um, in terms of, you know, the, the, the number of actual B Corps are small to medium enterprises. Okay. So it is 100% ripe for business. Of, I say this all the time to, to companies I'm either, you know, talking to about getting started with them or, or, or started working with them. It's not about size and kind of what you do. It's more about your mindset and your intent of what you want to do and what you want to prove that you're doing. Okay. And so how did you get into it? How did you come across it? That is a great question. And it's, um, I think my wife refers to it as my first early midlife crisis, <laughs> where um, I was, I used to work as a medical device sales rep. So I used to work for typically global multinational medical device companies, such as Johnson and Johnson's and other smaller ones. And um, there were some activities going on in some of those companies that when you're within them, you kind of just go with the flow and, you know, they pay you well and you can kind of turn a blind eye. And I guess I was genuinely young and the big boys were making me do it kind of excuses. Yeah. yeah. Um, but fundamentally it was the earthquakes here. So 2010 to 2011 earthquake sequence in Canterbury and then 2012 birth of um, our daughter. I pretty much had what's called a subconscious awakening. So it's really, really common that if you have a near-death experience or birth of a child or death of someone close to you, that you have this um, kind of existential wet fish to the face where you're given a real slap in the chops and you're like, whoa, what is this actually all about and what's going on? So I had that and I ended up leaving the medical device industry and I thought, okay, maybe it's just the industry that I'm in. Maybe I'll, I'll go and try something else. And so I ended up um, applying for about 60 different jobs across all different kinds of industries because I I kind of had no idea what I wanted to be when I grew up in that regard. And I ended up falling into a role, really, as general manager for a firm of surveyors and engineers back in Christchurch. We'd moved up to Auckland post-quake. And um, yeah, general manager for this firm and some of the internal culture just wasn't great. And so... I kind of started Googling, you know, is there some kind of HR program course that I can send a couple of people on and we could maybe sort of find some program that we could look at that would you know, bring the culture up. 
And on that journey, I stumbled across this thing called B Corp certification. And I was like, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, it's kind of looking at your business beyond not just your environmental footprint, but how you treat your staff and some other metrics, which we can sort of unpack a bit more in a minute. Yeah. And I thought, oh, wow, this, this looks really cool. I wonder if there's, if there's one in New Zealand. And I had a quick look. I was like, damn it, there is one in New Zealand. And I was like, I wonder if there's one in Christchurch. Hopefully there won't be one in Christchurch. I was like, damn it, there is one in Christchurch. So I emailed um, the CEO, Steve Arder, um, who's now actually based in Tahoe, California. Um, I said, hey, just stumbled across this B Corp stuff. I see that you are one. Like, can I come and have a chat? And so I booked in a, a, a 45 minute meeting with him at the head office, which used to be in Heathcote, just um, outside of Christchurch. And I left there maybe two and a half, three hours later, just <laughs> with my mind like completely expanded that, you know, that there, there was a group of companies and, and back in this was this would have been 2013. Um, you know, there was a group of companies globally that were aiming to be the best for the world, not the best in the world. And that was the thing I was looking for. It's like, I guess my time in the medical device and then in the in the world of sort of commercial property, it just seemed to be that all anyone cared about was making money and they didn't care about whether people or the planet got destroyed on the journey. And that was the thing that really wasn't sitting with me. And I think that was where my daughter really played a part. It's like, well, hang on a minute. Like what world am I creating that she's going to inherit? And do I want to be a part of one that she inherits where it's a great planet that's doing really, really well? Or do I want to just, you know, skip a beat and let her be the one who has to pick up some pieces of stuff that's not going so well? Yep. Oh, fantastic. Actually, it's interesting because you just kind of struck a chord with me. I, I realized that actually I had a similar kind of, I think you call it a subconscious awakening um, on mm. the death of my mum and my brother. Um, it was like, oh my goodness, life suddenly became too short and what are we doing? And I too, as, as you know, worked in the medical pharmaceutical industry for yep. quite some time. And I too yep. put up with all the stuff that went on. And now I look back and go, uh, I'm horrified actually when I look back at yep. what we put up with here. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's really cool. Well, it's, it's cool. It's uh, poignant. It's devastating it's enlightening called the bleeding edge it used to be on netflix i'm not sure if it's on there but it's a, it's a big expose of the medical device industry because a lot oh. of people kind of go again i guess it's topical in in the covid you know vax not vax uh, world yeah um, you know some people are skeptical of pharmaceutical uh, companies however the medical device industry is actually bigger more pervasive and less well known so if you think in a hospital Every yep. piece of equipment in a hospital is sold by a company, yes. in, including all the bits and bobs that go into a human in an operation. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that, that yeah. And typically that's the thing. We, we need that existential hit from outside to, yep. to make us wake up and wake go, up. Yeah. Well, what's this all for? Oh, well, I'm pleased that you, we both had that um, in, some, in some respects. Yeah. So um, tell me a little bit more about what it means then, you know, to be, because you said that you have to go, is it 80 out of 200? 80 out of 200 points on this. I have to say, uh, I've got to be honest. That, that, so if I was at school, that wouldn't even be a pass, right? So I've got to ask that question. <laughs> totally. And everyone says this. It's like, oh, how hard can this be? It's like, just turn up, you know, take the test. Yeah. Um, good luck is what I say in return to that. So <laughs> most companies who take the, assess the self-assessment for the first time score between 40 and 50 out of 200. Wow. So if you are a, a limited company who's, you know, you're, you're, only fiduciary responsibility is to run solvently, um, you know, and trade within the laws of the land. Most of those companies giving it a first go score between 40 and 50 points. So to be even getting 80, you're doing well. Um, I guess also for reference, there is no 200 point company in the world currently. Um, the highest, I believe at the minute is about 170. Okay. Um, so no one has got, you know, that close to 200 yet. So to be doing, to, to be scoring eight at 80, you're yep. doing significantly better than most the of your average. peers. Yeah. Okay. And so then tell me a little bit more about what's involved. Like what are the things that are measured? What does it look like? How, and also, I suppose I, I'm, I'm interested from a business point of view, what difference does it make to the business? Because it's very, all very well and nice to get a little tick and go, yes, we're B Corp certified, but what does it really do? Yep. Totally. Um, so the process, the, um, the assessment itself looks at your business across five uh, pillars, is, as I call them, or five sections. So yes. it looks at your governance. So who owns your business? How transparent is your business? There was that whole thing a few years ago. Was it the Monsec Fonseca, whatever it was called, where, you know, all these companies seemingly were owned by one guy in the Bahamas and there were 50 shell companies and, you know, no, no one knows where the money's going and no one's paying tax anywhere. You know, yep. if you're doing that, you're probably not going to make a great people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so the, the governance section yeah, is around sort of transparency um, and accountability, who owns you, um, you know, are you, you get more points for being a worker owned cooperative, things like that um, at, the, at sort of uh, the highest level. Then yep. it looks at your workers. Um, so what's, I guess, what benefits beyond 
what is state mandated do you provide to your employees? So in New Zealand, we tip, companies typically score really well on the workers section because we have a lot of favorable trade wins. We have mandated holiday, you know, maternity leave, paternity leave. Um, we have a living wage, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, the workers is uh, worker benefits and, and um, entitlements beyond what is uh, state mandated. Yep. Uh, then it looks at your um, environment, uh, sorry, community impact. So community is, is where you capture supply chain as well as um, opportunities that you're providing to perhaps people that are historically uh, finding it hard to get employment. So do you provide opportunities for people, you know, with disability or from other underrepresented um, groups to get employment yep. within your company? It's also where you capture anything around uh, charitable donations and, and giving back. Uh, then there's the environment section, which is pretty much, you know, the standard stuff, your carbon emissions, um, your energy usage, where you get your energy from, like, are you using renewable sources? Um, it looks at your water usage um, and it, it it will depend on whether you, you know, if you're a manufacturer, clearly you're having a bit more of an environmental footprint than if you're a service business like mine. Yeah. Um, then um, it has your um, customer model. So what are you selling? What what product or service are you selling and to whom? I think that's the five. Is that right? Well, yep, governance. that's five. I've got yeah. five. Governance, cool. community impact, workers, environment, customer model. There we go. Yep. That's the one. Yeah. Um, and you had a supplement. Oh, so yeah. So what, what does this actually give you? Well, this is the thing. I think when you look broadly what's happening in the world there there are some systemic factors that are driving the rise of people wanting to prove and verify the good that they're doing um you know climate change we've got the cop 26 stuff going on covid i think has led to a lot of business owners having that existential fish to the face it's like you know if your business wasn't an essential business during lockdown well why does humanity need you you know if you're not genuinely needed by humanity then why are you selling stuff and destroying the planet potentially you know at the yeah. worst at the worst end um, you know, globally, we've we've got movements, you know, pick a social movement where someone has a concern around it. You know, there's inequality, there's racial discrimination, there's gender equality, there's pay equity. There's, you know, th there are plenty of things that can be made better. So there's some systemic factors that I think are driving that. But for me, if you look at any business, there are four groups of humans that every business needs. You need customers, you need employees, you need investment, and you need suppliers. And all four of those groups are increasingly demanding that you do better in your business. So um, the Colmar Brunton Better Futures report is a really great report for some stats, if, you know, for Kiwi businesses. And year on year, it's showing that customers and employees want to work for and buy from brands that, that can prove that they're genuinely contributing to something better in life than just trying to make money. Yeah. The, the evidence is overwhelming there. Supply chain, you know, this is coming from from two levels. Um, you know, when you we've got some bigger B Corps coming through the process right now. One of the questions that you're asked as a B Corp is, you know, look at your own supply chain and try and find small, independent, locally owned suppliers where possible. So there is going to be becoming, a, I think, an increasing a tail wagging of dog where there is a large company in the middle who will want to start finding smaller independent suppliers locally yep. that they can, they can, you know, plug into. Um, but the big one for me really is, is sort of the investment side. And, and when, when the money people get B Corp, then you kind of know it's, it's a real thing. This isn't just, you know, tr hug a tree, let's all, you know, sink and BR and have a great time and try and save <laughs> the planet. You know, th there, there is some economic reality to it. So um, in May this year, um, ANZ bank, uh, created the first of this sort of lending vehicle of its kind in New Zealand, really at scale, where they created what's called an ESG back loan, so environment, social, governance back loan for Kathmandu of 100 million um, Australian dollars. And that is basically indexed on Kathmandu maintaining and increasing their B Corp certification score. Wow. So I, I used to give examples of this sort of Danone in Europe. This is yep. now big yep. companies in New Zealand. And mm -hmm. I get the impression that the team at ANZ and other, you know, Kiwi Bank is now a B Corp, Co-op Bank is a B Corp. I, I don't think it, we're far away from us seeing, um, you know, financing and um, investment vehicles where as part of the deal, you need to be proving that you're doing more good as a business. And, yeah. you know, ANZ have basically saying, you know, B Corp was the one that, B Corp was the framework that they chose because it just gave legitimacy. It's independently verified and it's globally recognized. Yeah. So um, like, so it's not just kind of waving the flag saying, hey, we're corporately social responsible, but we've actually yeah. got something that, that backs like, it up. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess just a couple of other things to, to, to point to. There's, so there's a study, there was a study done at the University of Ghent in Belgium um, 
a couple of years back or 2018. And um, they said, you know, using a panel data set of financial data of European firms that obtained B Corp certification between 2012 and 2018. And this paper empirically shows that B Corp certification positively impacts the turnover growth rates one year pre versus one year post certification. So th there are compelling arguments you know, spiritually, metaphysically, just do the right thing. Yeah. Um, there are marketing and uh, HR and recruitment arguments if you just kind of want to be a slightly better business and capture the goodwill. Um, yeah. But it actually, if all you care about is making more money, then you should be a B Corp. Because bottom line too. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, there is no way out of this. You should just be a B Corp. <laughs> so the Katmandu example is a lovely example of, you know, where that's obviously helped them with the bank stuff. Um, I know that you actually work with companies to help them prepare for the B Corp certification. Can you give me an example of a company, you don't have to mention names, but a company that you've worked with and the, the differences you saw before you started working with them and once you, they completed. Totally. Um, there's been some really good examples just recently where I think Kiwis in general, we're pretty humble. We don't always sort of recognize the good that we're actually doing, Yep. Um, which is one part of it. And the second part of it is the assessment if you've never done the assessment before, it, it can be quite tricky. Some people can just do it and they can breeze through it. But if you're time poor and you're constrained and, and you, you know, you just want to get it done, yep. it can, you know, chew up a bit of time, which is yeah, why I've credited that, that service. Um, but what I typically find, like one great example, um, it's a company that they sort of have nutrition and cosmetics um, uh, in, in, as their products. Yep. And there was a whole lot of stuff that they were doing that for them was just business as usual. But when I was unpicking it, I was going, do you know how phenomenal it is that you're doing what you're doing here? And, and they, they couldn't recognize it because it's like the fish in the water. It's like, well, what do you mean? We just, we just do this. It's fun. And Great. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so there are some companies where they're doing a lot of good um, and they just haven't, they've kind of lost sight of the good that they're doing and, and going through the assessment and they have to kind of dredge this stuff up and bring it up and go, Oh yeah, we do do that. We do do that. And you mm. can just see all the team, like the, the pride and the engagement and the excitement in the team, having someone external coming going like genuinely you are doing some amazing stuff here, like keep going, keep building on it. But equally there's quite a few companies where they kind of go, well, we, we don't know what this question means and, and I can sort of help unpack it. And they go, Oh yeah, actually we, we did do that. We had that training person come in and run that program or oh, but didn't we or didn't we help that company do this and it's like yes that's exactly what this question is asking and they're like oh okay so we are doing this stuff yeah so yeah it's kind of that's typically the two the two that I work with okay and so then if somebody does it and they they don't you know they don't score so well do they then get feedback about what they could be doing to improve like how does the whole process work yep so the, the self-assessment works on the principle that you need to be showing a score of at least 80 out of 200 before you can click submit. Um, and that's where people like me come into play. It's like, if, if you're stuck, a lot of people ring me because they're stuck at 60 or 70, um, yeah. or they just, they've had a quick look at it and they just go, Oh, I just need some help. I just want to do this quickly. So let's just get it done. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, so you can't click submit until you've reached at least 80. Um, typically well what can happen is you maybe you've got 85 and you and you click submit it's not uncommon that um during the initial process of verification with your auditor you will start losing points as they start going through right. and going actually okay we're not we're not so sure okay. about this one um or what have you yep but that's where you know that's the, what i'm trying to offer as a service that means that that's less likely to happen because you've kind of been almost i guess i, I kind of pitch it like you have to take an exam i've taken the exam multiple times and i've got the answer sheet yeah. so i'm pretty confident i can get you a decent score that's not going to be you know going up and down too much but yeah um typically you, like i say you can't actually click certify unless you've reached the 80 out of 200 threshold but yeah. i guess the Every, everyone kind of wants you to become a B Corp. So it's not a negative scoring system. It's a positive scoring system. So you get recognized for the good that you are doing, not, um, you know, uh, sort of punished for the good that you're, for the bad that you're doing, yeah. if that makes sense. So even, you know, the, the standards assessor will guide you and give you guidance and say, well, look, I can't give you these points right now. However, if you go and do this, yes. or if you can yeah. find me this spreadsheet, or if you can show me an invoice of this, then I can give you those points. That's so what I was hoping it, for. So it gives yeah. you some positive um, ways yeah, to actually yeah, totally. improve going forward. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. once you're part of the B Corp kind of um, family, I guess, of, of certified yeah. companies, is there support in that network? Is there anything else that, you know, that, that you get from being certified? 
Yep. Um, that's, we're definitely trying to get better at doing that. Um, it's been, you know, for the first few years, it was pretty hard with the, I guess, you know, the, the, not only the tyranny of distance that New Zealand suffers being at the bottom of the planet, but also we're a long, skinny country. Um, you know, we had lots of B Corps in Christchurch. We had a couple in Wellington and a few in Auckland. So it was really hard for us to get together. Mm-hmm. Um, there is now a really strong community in Auckland. Um, Mike Carroll, who runs an IT company called Brightly, um, he basically runs um, you know, the, the community events in Auckland. Yep. So if, if anyone's in Auckland, they want to go and have a, you know, have a have a look at what B Corp's all about when they're out of lockdown in the near future. Hopefully, Mike will be getting some stuff going. Um, Claire at Springload in Auckland, uh, sorry, in Wellington, she's been doing a lot of work trying to get the Wellington community going. Um, and myself and Kath from Eagle, who were the first B Corp in New Zealand, we, we try and keep some events going in in Christchurch. So we try and have, there's like they're called B locals. So there's okay. these regular B local events where if you're if you're kind of B curious, come along and have a have a a beer or whatever it is you know the event that's being run yeah um yeah so that's really a big part of it is trying to build that community of like-minded businesses that just want to be better and you know and go on a journey to to, to do more good awesome well, that's fantastic okay so um how long have you been certified for yourself now uh, 2016 was my first one so I certified 2016 it used to be that you recertified every two years so yep. I then I then recertified 2018 and then they've moved it to a three-year recertification cycle due to basically overwhelming demand in the system um so I'm literally just going through my my second recertification now so it's kind of like the the classic builder's house on the street I'm spending all my time helping other people which is why on Saturday I was working going right <laughs> got to pull all these documents together and find all this <laughs> all this evidence for my own assessment thanks so <laughs> So if people are curious, you said obviously they can go to the local events, the be local events, but is there yep. anything online they can actually check out as well? Yeah, totally. Um, so bcorporation.com.au is yep. the um, sort of B Corp um, regional hub. Um, I've got a ton of resources on my website. Um, I've got a, a cheeky little ebook that's free to download on my website. We can put links in the show notes or I can send it through yep. to you, whatever, whatever's Perfect. easiest, um, which, which basically summarizes, you know, the why, what and how of B Corp. Like, why is it a thing? Why you should think about it? And if you want to do it, how do you go and do it? Perfect. Um, well, I'll definitely grab that from you. I'll put that into the notes afterwards. Yep. Cool. And so your website is... Uh, growgood.co growgood.co fantastic yep. okay so the, one of the things I always ask is you know we're, we're aiming to help people improve their lives and their businesses what are the three kind of tips or tools or things that you would like to share that have been really helpful in your journey or that you think could help people on their journey yep I think the the overarching and critical one which is maybe the thing that you and I both experienced with the existential wet fish yep. is get get the alignment of you and your business. Like if, if you don't actually know who you are and you don't actually know what you stand for, yeah. you're always going to be suffering, you know, from what I call the authenticity gap. You're going to be doing things at work and wanting to build a business that's not actually reflective of who you really, really are. But that's the hard, hard sort of mahi that needs to be done that so few people actually want to do. But, you know, I, I am... I, I and my business are one, you know, like everything that I think and feel to be true, I get to express in my business. And that is liberating and exciting in equal measures. Mm-hmm. Whereas I know how I used to feel trapped in a corporate environment where I had to not say what I thought for fear of something happening. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, whilst obviously I work most with business owners and their leaders, I think it applies even when you're in a job though. Like if you're doing 100%. something that doesn't make your heart sing, for goodness sake, go out and find out what does because 100%. life is too short. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. It was, a, it was a disturbingly awful statistic from uh, UK government, UK Gov or UGov polls that they run. Again, this is maybe 2018. I think it was 35% of British employees felt that their job provided them with no meaning. And in fact, it was contributing to destroying the planet. And we wonder why there's a mental health crisis. Um, And equally for managers, I think it was 2017 or 2018 again, um, a World Economic Forum survey, 50% of managers and leaders surveyed felt their job provided them with no meaning. It's like, you're going to be there for 80,000 hours. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, please enjoy (laughs) it. I want to like it just a little bit. (laughs) Um, So yeah, get get that stuff under control. That would be my overarching one. Um, Do you have have a sort of a resource that you, I mean, I love the Start With Why by um, Simon Sinek, and he's got some some good workbooks things you can work through as well. Is it one that you you use or recommend? Um, yeah, I've got, I mean, that's something that I work with people as well is helping them work out, well, actually, who am I? Um, okay. I've yep. got a, a cool little YouTube video. I can give you the link to that, which is basically um, like a, a 60 minute overview of, of that journey to purpose and finding out actually Brilliant. who you are. Um, okay. there's, and there's so many, there's a lot of reading you can do there. Um, I mean, 
you know, things like Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, nice. you know, getting really down to sort of brass tacks and, um, you know, what, what is it all about? Um, the, I mean, ironically, some of the best things you can actually go and watch are movies, you know, the, 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 it's that that hero's journey. Hero's journey, just yeah, is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, is the journey yeah. that we typically all need to go through to become the best version of us. So go, you know, your homework is go and watch Star Wars, go and watch Harry Potter, go exactly. and watch The Hobbit, you know, <laughs> re, re, read The Hobbit, you know. Yep. Um, so that would be, yeah, does that count number as one? a second piece of advice? Or is that still no, number no, one? No, no, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm holding you to just one. That's number two, oh, please. <laughs> uh, number two, so my background was in sales and I do do sales training as well as the B Corp and Purpose stuff that I do. Um, yep. Do do more outbound sales activity if you're in a business. Okay. Um, you, can, you can never, you, you think you're doing as much as you can, but you're not. So, so just right. give me. So, what do you mean by outbound sales activity? Because you know, as soon as somebody says that to me, I go, "Oh my god, cold calling! I can't do it." But that's doesn't not. That's doesn't not have to be cold so, calling. Yeah, doesn't okay. have to. Well, I mean, it is. I mean, cold. Yeah. But cold calling, we're getting. Um, you should never be cold calling to sell on a call. The, the only reason you cold call is to ring someone to confirm their details and ask them to get an appointment. Yeah. Like, don't be selling to a straight. If they go, "Hey, well, who are you? What do you want?" and and you end up having a conversation with them, fantastic. Yeah. But, the reason for a cold call is to find is to basically ring the, the assistant, the PA, the EA, or whoever, to get the details, to send an email, to book an appointment. That's the only reason you should be cold calling. Yeah. But just as an example, I sent um, 500 emails out a month ago about a campaign I, I was initiating. From that, I got probably 30 to 40 replies. Yes, I want in. Yep. Um, about a year ago, I did another campaign. Um, I sent 1,000 messages via LinkedIn got a hundred replies, got 30 clients. Yeah. It's like, and it's funny, isn't it? Because more of it. <laughs> yeah. I think we get a bit nervous. It's like, oh, what happens if I send it and they don't want to come? Because I'm, I'm running an event at the moment. It's like, oh, if I yeah. invite somebody, they don't want to come. And then somebody said to me, well, if they don't want to come, they can ignore it. And it's like, totally. Oh, yeah. Okay. Totally. <laughs> yeah. I was doing some, doing some coaching with a, a client um, late last year. And I said to, you know, it's a right, challenge for you. you. You need to go and send at least um, 10 outbound emails this week to potential clients. And Checked back in a week later, she'd undenard. She'd spent five days procrastinating. Day six, she sort of sent five. Day seven, she sent five. I said, how did it go? She said, yeah, I'm absolutely gutted. I said, oh, well, what happened? She said, well, I sent one email to a national company that I've been really wanting to do some work for, but I've just hes been hesitant in sending the email. They they replied almost immediately. And the, and the reply was basically, if you'd messaged me yesterday, I would have chewed your arm off. However, we found someone and we're all good. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's like that's that's the corollary corollary to it or the contrary yeah. to it yeah. it's like they might be sitting there going oh my word if only there was someone out there who could solve who could this help problem us. and that yeah, could be you perfect <laughs> i yeah. love it thank you for that and the third and final oh i don't know this is tough this is I tough know. um but earning a keep <laughs> yeah, i know um I, I think for me it's just it, i guess it bring it back to the b corp and the purpose stuff it's like just be better you know aim to be the best for the world not the best in the world i think we we have this weird dynamic particularly in New Zealand of the whole tall poppy syndrome and, you know, not, not wanting to, to, to be the best, but it's like, I'm, I'm in some ways I'm kind of cool with that because tall poppy just for the sake of tall poppy makes no sense. Like mm -hmm. who, who cares how big your business is or what's your revenue? You know, a question I ask people in workshops quite often is when we're talking about, you know, purpose versus um, money. It's like, cool. Well, Nate, can you name the company that was listed number three on the NZX in March, 2013? Of course you can't, because so, no. no one cares, you know. <laughs> yeah. But you can you can remember a brand or a company that went out of its way to do something good that was meaningful that made a contribution, yeah. and that would be my thing. Is like just really think about how how can your organisation make a dent in the universe? You know, you're going to be remembered for the thing that you did, you know, how you made people feel rather instead of you know what you did and how you did it. Yeah, you know, I it's love like it. yeah. That's fantastic. Hey, look, some really great things there. I will make sure that I get hold of that YouTube video and your ebook link, and we'll put a link into your growgood.co where you've got other lots of useful information, right? Yes, um, there's a whole free resources page you can have at it and download to your heart's content. Wonderful. Now, if people want to get in contact with you, Tim, how would they get hold of you? Uh, just yeah, through the website, you can book yep. a book an appointment to have a call with me. Um, or genuinely, let's go old school. The easiest thing is to ring me. I, I email just um over it <laughs> please please someone fix email do something like, yeah yeah um my, my phone number's on my website um yep. it's 021 288 2363 call me when you're stuck in traffic if you listen yep. to the podcast call me afterwards and we'll have a chat <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounds fantastic. Hey, look, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. That's been really, um, really informative for myself and I'm sure for others as well. Um, love what you're doing. I'm going to go and have a look at it myself and see if we can sign up. So thank you. Excellent. Thank yeah. you for the opportunity. No worries. I look forward to talking again soon. Yeah. Thanks, Tim.